What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024, brought to you by the fine folks at Filmio. Filmio is a groundbreaking company that puts the power to green light movies in the hands of fans and creators. If you want to learn more about Filmio, check out their website, film.io. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing the team behind Penelope. Huge congratulations. I need to apologize in advance. I'm filling in for my colleague. Usually I'm a big nerd and I do my homework, but... This is going to be the first interview that I wing in a very long time, but I am a big admirer of everyone's work, so I'm very happy to be sitting here with you, and congratulations on the show. Thank Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Mark, a big broad question for you to start here, because I love how you champion independent filmmaking. What is something that you have always done since the very beginning to support indie storytelling? And can you also tell me something new you started to do to kind of readjust to how the industry has reshaped itself? Yeah. Well, what I always did from the beginning, which was uh, focus on myself selfishly and how to get my art out there, because that's usually how it begins. Um, But then you start to realize if you have a platform and you have something to do, you should probably uh, stop maybe reaching up and begging people to bring you up to their level and maybe look one level behind you of people who are trying to come to where you are and grab their hands and and take them up. And I didn't figure that out for uh, a little while. Um, But it is something, you know, Mel's been running our company for a long time and it's something that's become really important to us. Um, And not just in that way that's like, well, we're so successful, we got to give back now because that's part of it. But I think the 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 fun part of it is that by doing that, um, you know, we get to get rejuvenated by all kinds of stories that we wouldn't necessarily tell. So when we finance or produce someone's work who's coming up, we're getting their life perspectives. We're getting their knowledge of a certain area that like, I'm like, honestly, just not in touch with at all. And we get to collaborate with them and make something completely new. And so that's more what we're focused on lately. So I was reading a little bit about about how this project came to be. I believe you came up with the initial concept. Why loop Mel in the way you did? What is it about her creative sensibilities that you Mm. thought would enhance the core idea that you came up with? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Well, I started writing this show during the pandemic, you know, when we had that lovely, quiet, pensive time. And I kept thinking, God, it's so wonderful to have this space. My life is so busy and noisy and crowded. Um, And this is a show about uh, a 16 year old girl who absconds to the woods to escape the trappings of her modern life. She doesn't say anything to anybody and she doesn't even really know why she's going. She's just trying to connect to something that she feels she has lost. Um, So Penelope is definitely the 16 year old female avatar of me. That's really what I want to do. Um, And um, when I started writing it, I knew that these were themes that were very close to Mel's heart. Um, And at the same time, Mel has been running our company for so many years and has has really, you know, for lack of a better phrase, has taken a back seat uh, in terms of guiding these creative projects, being our producer, being the sort of like den mother of them all, but has never taken the wheel as a director. Um, And so we started talking about this as this could be a really great place for her to sort of take this material that I started off, write it together, and then pass it to her to really take home as a director. All right, Mel, I'm going to follow up on that with you now. When you jump into a new role in that respect, what do you assume is going to be the greatest challenge? And then how do you go about tackling that challenge so that you could then direct this uh, show with authority? I mean, I think... um it was more written than I'm used to when I direct. And so I think finding a way for Mark and I to collaborate in that way of finding a way for me to kind of imprint my own self on there and figure out how to tell it together um, was a really cool new experience for this project. But I mean, I've been producing for 15 plus years and, um, and you do a lot of directing without really directing. You're the, the ghost director on a lot of those and um so i had many years to just learn how to do it you know all right can you take us through the casting process a little now because i i believe that i read there was a bit of an extensive search for your title character yeah yeah our our casting director amy renee you know really worked close with mark and i and we did a pretty wide search um 
and I think it was like 400 girls and then I got a hundred passed to me and uh and just kept boiling it down but I think the minute I saw Megan um I we knew we knew it was and I had you know I had heard about Megan you know, a year or two ago from a close friend, Lynn Shelton, who had directed Megan in her first project, Little Fires Everywhere. And was like, there's, you got to keep your eye on this girl. So when Megan's little video popped up, I was like, oh, there she is. Megan, I'll let you talk about your experience in a minute. But Austin, I'm going to throw this question to you, having worked with her as a scene partner. What is something about working with her as the main character, number one on the call sheet of a show like this, that you are excited for more actors to get to experience when they work with her as a lead in the future? Um, Yeah, I mean, she's very good. She's very free. Um, Has just a great light to her, you know, which is really special, you know, just to like have that inside of you. Um, yeah, she's a great scene partner. I don't know. It was fun. It's just fun. You know, just got to kind of like be there and kind of forget about anything and just, you know, be with her. Yeah. Always a good quality to have. All right, Megan, for you now, when you get the role, what is the quality of Penelope's that you're most looking forward to playing? But then as you started to dig into the character, can you pinpoint a quality you found along the way that wound up being more creatively fulfilling to incorporate than you ever could have imagined? Originally, when I had first read Penelope and I read the script, I was very inspired because it was something that I was used to, the sort of like outdoor wilderness type type of girl getting to like explore nature and getting to forage and do sort of new things. And at first, it was kind of something that I felt at home with, which is why I was drawn so much when Mel and I started talking with Mark. Um, but then once I started getting into it, I figured out that she was just as lost as everybody else. And I think that was really important to me because I obviously am only 20, but at points in my life, I felt a little lost in what I was doing and being able to explore that with Penelope in a different sense and finding myself a little bit more through Penelope and that experience was very enjoyable and kind of life-changing in a sense. (laughs) I feel like this question's not going to have an easy answer, but I I find it fascinating because I feel like in in most cases when a a story like this comes up, Mm -hmm. like the character makes the decision to to do something like go out into the wilderness with such authority. What is it like playing a character confidently when the decision doesn't have confidence behind it, if you know, but I guess it might be more of an internal feeling that can't be articulated. I think it's liberating. I think it's liberating to have a character who knows so much of what she wants to be in life. And although she might not know who she is in the moment, being able to feel those things and be able to do them confidently and be able to explore parts of herself that she never really knew before. It was liberating. I mean, there's not many other words that reflect how I felt in the moment for that. So liberating was probably the best thing that I have to describe it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. It makes sense. So I, I believe, Mark, you brought this up. The the idea of, you know, disconnecting, going out into the wilderness is uh, very appealing to some. For each of you now, just for fun, what is a skill that you would actually have out in the wilderness that would serve you well so you could survive? But then also, what's like a seemingly silly thing that, you know, you would never be able to do and would kind of do you in if you went out there like that? I think something probably that I would find important is talking to yourself. Because if you're alone, Mm. that's very... I was thinking like build a fire, but that's probably (laughs) actually the the more valuable skill to have. Keep yourself entertained, I think, is something that is very useful. Um, Probably something stupid is... I'm not entirely sure to be maybe knowing how to do a build a tent. I mean, it seems relatively easy. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. <laughs> I always think like running out of contact solution or like not having enough toothpaste or something oh, would stress me out. <laughs> that I don't think I could survive without contact solution. I wouldn't be able to see. It'd All be right. very disappointing. I'm glad I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. um, anyone else have some examples? A skill you actually have and then something seemingly silly that would do you in out in the wilderness? I mean, I uh, before production, I took a bunch of survival courses. So I, I feel like I'm cheating a little when I say I know how to build a hut out in the wilderness to live in out of leaves and sticks. Um, you were taught, but that's not 
a given that you're going to be able to do it on your own. I too. did do so, it. Yeah, I no, did that's what I'm saying. No, I the did fact it, that you did it. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, I did it. Uh, I didn't see pictures. So. You know, it's I. I've always thought I had the best uh, sense of direction. And then in one of the classes, they were like, "Walk out into the woods, uh, twenty two hundred steps, and turn around and find your way back." An hour later, a search party <laughs> is like, "Where is Mel? We got to find Mel." Uh, so I, that didn't work. Yeah, I can pretty much lay my head down and sleep anywhere so that's like my superpower is like is Super, being able to sleep power. in the woods like i'm really into backpacking and and going out you know and like to like twelve thousand feet and sleeping up there and like it can be tricky so like that's the thing that i can do that uh that is a little bit of my superpower where i get taken down is like so pooping in the woods all right let's just let's just get it out in the open here guys like um there was a time in my life where it was fine to just bring some regular toilet paper you know and then you pack it out with you because you want to be a good citizen but there's this new thing now that these little rolls and you pour a little dab of water and it turns into like a wet wipe mm. and so now i've been spoiled Ooh. with the wet wipes and if i don't have my wet wipe when i'm out there i turn into a raving lunatic Use and, I, a and, leaf. and i need to no i need to be like medevaced out without my wet wipes <laughs> it's just not sustainable i can't believe i didn't think about that and i went for contact solution and toothpaste like there's a there's a proper priority order that i missed there austin what you got for us oh i uh i i want to expand my my knowledge but right now i would just i would probably pass away pretty quickly <laughs> um but i i don't want to be like that uh forever and i i do like, you know, I eventually want to spend a lot of time out in nature. It's been a lot of, uh, in my car, sleeping in my car. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to figure out all the other stuff. You roll down the windows one night a little bit and then you can like open the door and just like slowly get yourself. Yeah. 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 A little bit out. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Slow immersion. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Let my sleep with my feet We could my work on that right now. Yeah. Mel, what's a, what's a tip or trick you learned while, uh, while uh, doing that course that uh, could be a good like starter step for someone. Uh, oh man, the one that I always loved was that you take cotton balls and you dip them in Vaseline and then you always have like a fire starter that's kept waterproof safe. That's a little tidbit. That's pretty dope. Yeah. That's, that's pretty what, dope. Yeah. That's a very good idea. Um, so I have to incorporate our Filmio question, which I absolutely love because, again, the company is all about putting creative control in the hands of the creators. And I think this industry needs a lot more of that. So whether it's on this project or something earlier in your careers, can you pinpoint a time when you didn't expect to get creative control, but someone believed in you and they gave it to you and a project turned out better off for it? I mean, there's a, yeah, so I'd say there's a related story with, with Penelope, um, because this was something like when Mel and I finished the writing of these scripts, you know, we were at a place where we were like, okay, this is like the most important thing that we have ever made and we need to get out here and we need to do this right. And we started sharing those scripts with companies who traditionally finance them and we realized that they weren't really prepared to make a slow paced show about uh, a young adult girl's growth towards nature and, and and the time of euphoria. That's just not what they were ready to do. And if we were going to make it with them, we were going to have to make some pretty significant changes in order to do it. Um, so, you know, we're no strangers to self-financing films and bringing them to Sundance. We've done that for years. But an eight episode television series is a whole other ordeal. So it was not so much a case that Mel and I were tapped by someone who believed in us. Mel and I kind of looked at each other and were like, we believe are in we ourselves. fucking doing yeah. this? <laughs> are we doing this? Yeah. Let's go. And took essentially the biggest financial and creative risk uh, that our company has taken so far. No, no big deal. Yeah. No big deal at all. We're not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I, like I keep saying it all day here, like this is the manifestation table. You're going to get everything you need, the response you need at this festival, and it will soar. I can't wait to see it. Who, has a, who else has an answer to the- I think the, you're brilliant. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to clip that out and apply it to everything I do. Um, who else has an example of a time when they got creative control when they didn't expect to get it? I think, I don't want to sound redundant, but 
Penelope. I mean, I was given so much creative like freedom and how I was responding to the things that I was talking to myself. So I was able to respond to myself and the nature around me and being able to do that and having Mel there to like help me push to something greater was I don't think I've ever experienced something like that. She was very helpful and just kind of let me roam free in who Penelope was and kind of figuring it out as I went. And I couldn't have asked for something more creative and amazing. It was just You invented fabulous. the Penelope dance. I mean, you, it <laughs> happened out there in the woods. What so. is the Penelope dance? Well, you're going to have to watch yeah, the, show. Have to show. Watch the show. Can I get a tease? Nope. No, nope. oh, I'm sorry. Nope. That's, I mean, that's very effective uh, marketing. It's working on me. I actually have an answer related, again, back to this. <laughs> yeah, you have to talk about Penelope. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no, but it, 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 is, it is actually the first thing that came to my, my mind. But there's this um, song that I do in this, and I, you know, I, I play, and I've, you know, written you know some things for fun and stuff like that but i i can't remember where it was kind of it dawned on me that i was going to have to uh somewhat create this thing like myself like they did like mark sent me like some lyrics and stuff like that but then musically like i needed to create everything and then like there was like changing of like the lyrics and stuff like that but that was a great like trust in that because i thought they were maybe just going to send me something to to play or something like that um so that was yeah that was cool to have that kind of confidence i remember when you sent that demo back to us and yeah. we saw it and i was just like yeah. this is so just played on repeat perfect. all day it was so perfect independent television is a little rarer than independent filmmaking what piece of advice would you give to someone who wants to make a show independently and they're afraid that it's impossible well, how much time do you have? Uh, <laughs> um, first of all, uh, that advice will come, you know, in a in a, a couple of months once we know how things go for us. Um, it's a little fresh, um, but I do think that um, you know what we're staring down right now in the industry is not dissimilar to what happened in the '90s and the early 2000s that really helped create a healthy environment for independent film, which was they stopped financing these special stories because they were scared they weren't going to make money. So we had to find a new way of doing it. And that's where independent film emerged. And we're watching these lovely streamer companies that created the birth of really incredible television um, start to die out now. Um, they're having problems. So there's going to be a dearth of really interesting, unique storytelling in TV. And so now's the time for us to start thinking about doubling down on that or it's just going to die. Anything you want to add, Mel, before we close out? No, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mark and I say it all the time, but it's just like find a way to make something. I like that pep talk right there. Um, congratulations on Penelope. I really, I can't wait to see it. It is a feat to make a show this way. So congratulations. You all deserve it. Thank you for sharing your experience with us today. Thank you. Thanks Thank for being you. here. To everybody out there, stay tuned. More from Sundance 2024 for you very soon.